Hello everyone and welcome to this video. This video is going to talk about the Confluent Kafka integration uh, with Databricks. We are doing a series of videos to educate our customers who are new to Databricks um, and these, these videos are intended for various personas. So for example, a data engineer who is trying to set up the first production pipeline, a data scientist trying to get the first experiment working, a data analyst who is trying to set up the first dashboard. This particular demo talks about um, Kafka and Databricks integration. So it, it, it falls into the data engineering space. So the objective of this demo is to ingest the uh, data from Confluent Kafka topic called orders using the inbuilt Spark Kafka connector. Write this information into a delta table in the Databricks lake house uh, ecosystem and create a dashboard that shows the most popular 10 states in terms of order units. And not only that, look at the distribution of where the orders are coming from in terms of the zip code diversity. So these are the two things that we are tracking in the dashboard. And here is the sneak peek of the dashboard that we'll be creating. So let's see how we went about it. So from the architecture point of view, as I said previously, we are using the inbuilt Spark Kafka connector in Databricks to ingest information from the event streaming platform. We are not only reading the actual data, but also connected to the schema registry. And we'll look at the steps that we perform to do that so that we can look at the schema, what is declared for that topic. Uh, the other thing that I want to highlight is both Kafka as well as Databricks can be in any platform for this integration to work, whether it be GCP, Azure, or AWS. Let's quickly talk about the prerequisites for this integration. Definitely we'll need the API keys for the Confluent cluster to which we are connecting to for the data. We'll also need the API keys and secret for the registry where the topic is declared or the schema for the topic is declared. Uh, in this case, we are using a PyPy um, a package to, to uh, you know, make sense of the Avro data that we are in ingesting but there are other ways you can you know uh, use other libraries that you can use in databricks as well so once we have all the apis and secrets um, we will establish connectivity and what we are doing here is we are declaring some variables for different uh, you know different things that will be passing as part of the connectivity like the cluster name the bootstrap servers the topic name um, also, we are declaring all our API keys and conf, uh, you know, uh, the secrets uh, as part of a database secret so that it's not exposed to the users and it's all handled at a centralized place um, in, in Databricks. We are also passing the table path where the delta table, the resulting delta table would be residing and the checkpoint path for the streaming to have checkpoints, regular checkpoints, so that it doesn't have to start from the beginning. Um, the other thing that we are doing is we are declaring a schema registry client that will enable us to uh, go and fetch the declared schema for the topic that we are reading. So once we have set up the schema registry client and we have all the connectivity details, we'll start reading the data from the topics. Uh, and this method of uh, you know, read stream that we will be implementing is great for you know any topics that have multiple types of data coming in or the, the schema, uh, schema is evolving as uh, the stream continues. So what we are doing here is we are doing some kind of, a, you know, there's a conversion going on to read the schema ID in the proper format. We are declaring a data frame where we are passing all the details for our bootstrap servers, all the information that we established earlier or declared earlier in our uh, variables. We are passing what the security protocol is. We are talking about what topic name to subscribe during this read stream and what happens when the data loss happens and what's the starting offset. So you have earliest, latest, you know, based on uh, your, what your data strategy is, we can declare uh, any of these uh, values here. And we are also selecting only the things that we need for downstream writing to uh, the data table. So this is, uh, this is the you know, read stream that actually creates a data frame that will be used uh, later on. Uh, we are also doing a display of this data frame just to check on, you know, what, what the values are. Again, this is something that we can, uh, you know, uh, we don't need to do 
uh, when we do it in production is just to you know do a quick test on what data frame is doing so once we have read the data using the uh, read stream we'll be writing the information into a data table so what we are doing here is we are declaring a function uh, that passes the data using the schema id um, as uh, as one of the attributes that will be passed or what we are doing here is uh, we are making sure that in case of any corruption of the data the stream will stop the writing will stop we can also set it to permissive if you want to keep it continue it in case of data corruption we are getting the schema using the id that we are passing as one of the parameter values here so that we can read the specific schema for that particular micro batch um, now what what we are doing here is uh, we are getting the actual schema right um, using these uh, uh, different transformations and passing that to get the topic you know and, and and you know partition offset so what what we are doing in this function is we are going to call this function if the id for that schema changes that means there are any any schema changes to that particular topic we will not include that in that particular micro batch so that's the next step so here we are declaring that function that will do its job for each of the micro batches uh, definitely we want to write the information so we are we are doing that in the data frame here the format will be delta the mode will be append and in case of any schema discrepancy on the delta side what we want is the merge schema to be true so it, it should merge the differences um, we will start the you know uh, start that uh, right using that uh, data frame um, and uh, this uh, one micro batch will look at one specific id in case of id changes it will as i said the function will be called for each uh, unique id or, or each uh, schema uh, versioning that has happened uh, on the schema registry side um, here we are doing a um, you know read from that particular location where we are writing using this information uh, this particular um, write stream and uh, we are not declared any kind of metadata we have not declared any kind of table uh, thus far we have only written it into a specific location as delta format and but we can still use the display function here to get the contents of this information that we have written and if we see all the payload is in the parse value attribute here right so what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll we'll just do a quick check of what we see in the parse value so these are all key value pairs that are part of our uh, you know we want to make sure that we convert them into a row column format because our goal remember is to create a bi report uh, that will make that will make things easy if we have it in a row column format and here we are doing you know uh, uh, this, this parsing of this information from the key value pair and making a temporary view again we are not declaring any permanent metadata for this or any managed table for this we are just creating a temporary view uh, we are calling it bronze orders and then we can you know do a select from that bronze orders like any other table or view here what we are doing is we are trying to get the uh, states that have the that has the sum of the order units the maximum um, and we are getting the first you know 10 values um, or the, the states that have the highest 10 values uh, similarly what we are doing here is we are getting the state uh, and, and we are counting how many distinct zip code each state has so that we know where the traffic for our orders are coming from which states have the more diverse uh, zip codes uh, you know inherent in them and that's what we are doing in this query so we can we can actually look at the values and we can create any kind of you know plots that we want to create for both of these uh, results and we can add them to our dashboard so if you want to create a new dashboard we can do that as well but if you want to add these queries that we uh, that we run on this data table we can do that as well so we can click here and we can add to any of these uh, uh, dashboards so if we go to the existing dashboard that we were looking at uh, earlier in the video this is the dashboard that we have it's a real-time dashboard that's plugged into your data table to summarize uh, what we saw in this demo is how easy it is to use the spark Kafka connector to connect to the uh, confluent even streaming platform um, look at the contents of the schema declared interactive uh, in interactive fashion um, we, we can also write this information quickly to our lakehouse platform in the delta format uh, we can allow bi and dashboard capabilities on top of this uh, this uh, delta format 
and easily expose it to other BI platforms as well as needed. Hopefully you would find this demo useful. Uh, I would uh, recommend to look at the description of this video to find some useful links around the code that was used in this video and other information that will be more relevant. Thank you very much.